It's a great pleasure to be welcoming you all as an audience virtually here today, but also our speakers. My thanks in particular to Dr. Udit Bhatia, our JRF, Junior Research Fellow in Politics here at Jesus, who will chair the event and cover practical logistics of the session and actually introduce the speakers in rather more detail. But in advance of that, can I just add my thanks to each of them, to Anita, to our own fellows, uh, Stuart and Stefan, and to Sir Ed Davey, an alum and product of the PPE program uh, who matriculated here at Jesus in 1985. PPE uh, was in some sense the 20th century effort to modernize and broaden the curriculum beyond the greats. In particular, the newly emerging disciplines of modern political science and economics. Stemming from the core role of logic and philosophy in the liberal arts curriculum of the medieval and early modern university, the 19th century saw the development of the famous greats degree, the study of the great works of human thought and the ancient world in history and philosophy. And in the early 20th century, philosophy, politics and economics, PPE or modern greats was developed, born of the conviction that studying the great modern works of social, political and philosophical thought could have a transformative effect on students' intellectual lives and thereby on society at large. This course remains the largest and one of the most popular in Oxford. I'm delighted that Jesus has decided to hold its own celebration of this very important degree. We thought we'd start this evening with the subject that few people have in mind when they think of the degree or think of applying for the degree in PPE. In my experience, most students come to Oxford fired up, ready to study politics or economics. What may surprise you to learn is how many of them fall in love with philosophy and often consider it the most stimulating part of their degree. And they also consider it extremely useful in their subsequent careers, whatever that may be. I don't believe we should think of PPE as aiming at any particular career, but rather we should think of it as a particular grounding or jumping off point for a variety of careers. And for those who do end up in Westminster or the city, I believe that they're much more affected for having been exposed to philosophy as an undergraduate. This degree is not just about the intersection of these subjects. It's also about pursuing each of them in its own right as much as possible, while also studying the other subjects in their own right as much as possible. This is very demanding for the student, and it should be. When a PPE student studies philosophy, they don't just study political theory or moral philosophy. They also have the opportunity to study epistemology, metaphysics, logic, aesthetics, the history of philosophy, and much more. Anita, you mentioned that other universities have been trying to follow the PPE model in the United States and in China. Is that also the view they hold of getting students to do each of these subjects uh, undiluted, as you put it? Not all. Um, I think in the United States, the, 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 the people I spoke to who I didn't pursue much further, um, they were not universities you will particularly know. Um, they were more interested in something that was very much a, you know, a politics and economics. And although they had philosophy there, it was to do a bit of, a bit of ethics, you know, a bit of political, theory, not really to do philosophy. However, when I spoke in China, um, there they were very interested in philosophy and they're very interested in how and um, we managed to keep philosophy as central. And the reason they said that is because they're very concerned that the students don't become indoctrinated in any way. The whole point of this degree for them is that they learn to think, to undermine and to question. And that's something they believe that philosophy will give the students and I believe that's true too. I want to try and make comment really on four things as quickly as I can. Um, the first concerns the role that Anita alluded to that PPE plays in the political elite recruitment in the UK. Um, and here I note that when, when Ed was elected as Lib Dem leader, congratulations Ed, someone posted on Twitter the list of those who got firsts in PPE uh, in 1988. And the tweeter was pointing to the fact that the class list included, as well as Ed, 
one David Cameron. And if you were eagle-eyed, you might have noticed that the class list also included Ed Balls, Jeremy Hunt, and Dido Harding. And if you were particularly eagle-eyed, uh, you might have noticed that it also included myself. So um, this is a kind of illustration of this kind of link between PPE and the British state elite. And in all seriousness, I think there's actually something wrong about the extent to which our political elite comes from this degree, or at least there's something here that we need to approach critically. There is an expertise that PPE gives, but there's also, if we're recruiting our elite too much from one source, there's going to be a lack of diversity that makes for poor decision making and may add to a sense of disenfranchisement for some people. We may be at the beginning of a period in which there's a need to completely remake the political constitution or constitutions of the nations of the UK. So my question, which connects back to my previous points, is whether PPE is preparing us with the expertise, with the skill set to address these new challenges. I mean, here I was interested again in, in Anita's pointing to the new paper on, relatively new paper on climate change uh, in the philosophy department, which I think is excellent. But I, 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 there I think there might be particularly an argument for an interdisciplinary paper, which enables students to look at a pressing problem like climate change in terms of economics, politics, and uh, philosophy. That I think would be a really good way of preparing people to uh, approach that challenge. I think we should celebrate and defend the spirit of intellectual inquiry, which is PPE at its best. PPE was born at a time when politics was shaped centrally by the confrontation between capitalism and socialism. And it encouraged students to ask the big questions about how society is fundamentally organized economically and politically. And I worry that we live in a time when this kind of deep questioning is increasingly viewed with suspicion in some quarters. Um, I first really have to reflect on this typical feeling of relative inadequacy as an economist, where we are very much trained to be rigorous, but actually maybe not have that much depth sometimes in some of these matters. And the thing I want to actually talk a little bit about and probably reflecting on some of my own experiences within it is that balance between um, expertise and this kind of broadness of training that we allude to. And I, I uh, didn't want to uh, get into some of the conversation just now because actually arguably I touched a little bit on it. You know, while there are definitely an awful lot of experts, it's very striking for me that many of the economists that end up being placed at the MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, that in international organization take on leading positions, or indeed in Whitehall that take on leading positions, and indeed in academic life, some of the most celebrated economists in the UK actually wear products of PPE one way or another, that actually it is there. That actually, you know, look, if you have an expert field like this, and I think Anita alluded to it, then go and do a PhD in economics and make sure that you at least still have that option to do so uh, from your degree. But don't necessarily think that, uh, that that option is then excluded from you. And the reason why I think these people are, are so successful in an age where there is a big appeal to experts is that actually we need people who can judge much more important in the world is not just to have experts, but we have people who can judge the expertise and make the link with COVID-19. That is the biggest problem we've been having, including in the UK, which is actually people who can judge the evidence rather than saying simply, you know, we're going to follow the science. You know, you can't follow the science because the science is not unambiguous. It needs judgments that actually helps us to actually make careful positions within it. I have to have my expertise because expertise matters, otherwise I can't make a good judgment. But I need more than expertise 
to be able to make good judgments. And that's actually where I want to, want to end with, is that, you know, it is great to have degrees that actually provide you with frameworks, normative frameworks, crucially important, political frameworks. You can't work in Whitehall without understanding the politics of the place, but also have frameworks to reflect on it and not just deal it as a transactional thing there. And of course, you need also be able to judge probably the value of things and the trade-offs that often are economic choices as well that need to be made. And I think that actually suggests to me the enduring success or the potential of the enduring success of degrees like PP in Whitehall and there I say in politics, because that's where many of these things together. I only have finally one question whether the degree itself and the way the dis different disciplines these days fill it in are actually providing the students with these frameworks where they can balance these things out. And I'm actually probably with Stuart with the question he's asked, do we do enough to try to confront these frameworks and actually help to balance these rather than having three subjects that each of them with academics that arguably push them to be somewhat specialist in a bit of it, rather than actually bringing it more together. That's where I will stop. Uh, now, I've been asked to talk about my time at university studying uh, PP and how it's applied in my political career. So um, I guess this is confessional time, uh, uh, but um, please don't tweet. Um, <laughs> as an undergraduate, you know, um, let, let me be clear, I had a, a, a such fun uh, both at Jesus and even doing, doing the studies. I thought PP is a fun subject and I don't think we should lose sight of that. I, when I looked at the options I had, it was like I was in a sweetie shop. It was fantastic. And, and that's something that and I'm sure other people studying uh, other subjects at, at university have that experience. But I think having fun and being motivated to study and you you can't i can't believe anyone can study pp at oxford and not not enjoy the studies because it was amazing i can think of times in my uh political career where my pp reading uh, and training and studies was absolutely extremely helpful in what i was doing um let me start with politics um i remember being taught um uh, and reading at oxford that you had to watch your civil servants when you were a minister because they played a few games with you. And one particular lesson I remembered was how when you get your red box, they put the thing that they don't really want you to look at right at the bottom of the red box. So when you're really tired, you, you, you don't really you just take the recommendation of the civil servants and, and um, you don't bother or you never get to it because there's too much in the red box. So what I did as a minister, I always went to the bottom of the red box first thinking that, that that's what my civil servants didn't want me to read. Um, and that stood me in good stead with one particular issue when I didn't believe what I'd been hearing. And uh, they were very reluctant to give me the spreadsheet that I'd requested. And eventually I got it after three requests and it was put at the right at the bottom of the red, of the red box. And unfortunately it had the message that I, I feared it would. So understanding those uh, political battles uh, and those political traditions is it helped me out you know i hope ppe can be uh continued i hope it can be improved i think the diversity point that stuart makes is extremely valid um there are many more challenges facing our world uh uh, uh our principal knows uh, one through artificial intelligence um there's another one that i worry about i'll be interested in other panelists views sometimes one feels we're in the age of unreason uh, where rational arguments and experts, as, as Stefan was saying, aren't valued anymore. And quite how we work that through in the political sphere, I wouldn't mind a bit of advice on, uh, because um, sometimes it doesn't look like uh, the evidence counts for very much. I'll leave it there. Mm -hmm.